mighty name. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Glorify you. Magnify you. Honor you today. Oh, for you're so worthy. You're so glorious. You're so mighty. You're so wondrous. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Glorify you. Magnify you. Honor you. Just reverence him for a moment. Oh, we love you, Father. We glorify you. We magnify you, Father. We love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we just reverence you. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the Holy Ghost this morning. Yeah. Freedom to move. Freedom to flow. Freedom to speak. Freedom for us to just, just move forward and go in your presence, Father, this fullness of joy. And, Father, we just give you that glory, that honor, and that praise, Father, you so deserve. Thank you, Lord Jesus. is not going to end like it started. For many, you would say, well, it was going to be this way or that way or the other way, but things have not turned out like you thought they would turn out. There's been a little gain here and a little gain there. A little hope here and a little hope there for many. Many even in this room. But many thought this decision and that decision and the other decision will all turn out this way. And this will be great. And that will be great. And this other way will be great. But as you get to this place on this day, at the end of this year, 2017, things did not turn out maybe like you hoped. Things did not turn out like you thought they would turn out. Little gain and little increase, but as you look back, you would say, well, made little improvement, little gain and little moving forward, but it's not as I hoped. It's not as I desired. But I'm calling on you this day. If you're going to move forward in 2018, in 2019, in the days and years and seasons to come, yield to me in a greater measure, for yes, you've begun. Yes, you've begun. Many have begun again on the race that I've called you to run. You've taken some steps. You've making, made some decisions, although minor decisions. There's more decisions to come, more surrender to come, more commitment to come. And as you do so, you will see change. Whereas this year, 2017, there's been little gain, little improvement. And many would say, even in this room, well, I've made some gain, but it's nothing compared to the gain that I will. And I so desire for you, says the Lord, there's much more to come, not just in one area, not just in one realm, not just in one place. Oh, but in every area of your life, it is a time of enlarging my people, of enlarging my body, of my body rising up and moving forward as you surrender to me, as you obey me and not have your will and your way in your life, but allow me to have my way and bring my will to pass in your life as you surrender to me, saith the Lord. este. 2018 will be a year of expansion. It will be a year of expansion. A year of expansion in every front, in every area of your life as you surrender to me and as you obey me. And yes, the divide. The divide, even among my people, will grow, oh, much wider, much wider. It's been growing wider, but much wider between those that trust me, those that obey me, and those that follow me, and those that say they're Christians and go their own way. The divide, the birth, will grow wider than ever. But for those of you and many that sit in this room, you choose to follow me. You choose to trust me. You choose to obey me. You decree and declare the 2018 by my spirit, and my word will be a year of expansion. A year of expansion in your heart, in your life, concerning spiritual things. A year of enlargement. For it said many times throughout my word that I will enlarge your heart so that you can receive more. So that you can know more. So that you can walk in more. So that you can step out by faith in more. And you'll walk in that power that you so desired. That you even prayed to me, saith the Lord, but nobody knew. Nobody saw. And maybe others didn't understand. But you know there's a place. You know there's a land that I've called you to possess. You know there's a land I've called you to go in. In 2018, concerning your heart. Concerning spiritual things. 
things will be a year of expansion. Oh, it seemed as if those things were held back to a degree in 2017, but you'll see beginning in even January and even now 2018, as you take heed to my word and as you surrender to me and as you move forward in the face of adversity, just as your Lord Jesus Christ did with all boldness in the Holy Ghost, you'll see that no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Yes, you'll face opposition. Yes, things will come against you. Yes, there'll be persecution as you decide, decree and declare that you'll live godly, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And you'll see that expansion concerning spiritual things. You'll see that walking in my spirit, you'll see the spirit of seeing and knowing operate in a measure that you've not ever seen and known before. And there'll be certain things that you wondered about even up until now that you'll know, saith the Lord. You'll know this is the way to go. You'll know this is the way it is. You'll know this is what to do. And others may say, how do you know that? And you'll be able to say, oh, my God has told me so. My God has directed me. And many that have questioned many things will come to know me, saith the Lord, because of your decision and your life and the times and seasons that you're living in. For others have thought, this is a good time. Well, even if it's been good, the best is yet to come. As you surrender to me, it'll be an expansion concerning spiritual things, but even in a measure concerning financial things, concerning the blessings of the Lord. Lord, we're seeing like there's been a holding back and there's a pressing back and many even the tithe and give and you've been obedient to surrender and submit even concerning the financial area. The enemy has endeavored to stop you. He's endeavored not just to hinder you, but to stop you. And you sit here now under the sound of my voice. You sit here right now in this place and you've stepped out and you know the will of God and you know the word of God, but it's not seemed even the same. It seemed harder than it ever was before. 2018 will be a year of expansion. The blessings of God will abound in your life in a measure that you've never seen or known before. And you continue to give me the glory, honor, and credit that I so deserve because you have chosen to obey me. You've chosen to be willing and obedient and I'm going to expand you in that area and it'll be in a measure like never before. Brokenness shall be no more. Brokenness, yes, in a good way. Brokenness, yes, in a good way. For you've been able to back up and you've been able to see even in my body great brokenness, bad brokenness, not tenderheartedness, brokenness from sin, brokenness from destruction, brokenness from hurt, harm. Much offense has abounded. Not the spirit, not the word, but more offense than, uh, than the word and the spirit has abounded among my people. But you'll see that I'm a repair of the breach. I'm a restore of the gap. And you're going to see that as many, even in this place, there's the remnant of my people stand and take their place. First they'll kneel and then they stand and take their place because they sought my face and I've given them wisdom. I've given them direction. I've given them boldness. Make no mistake about it in 2018. Everybody is going to know more clear than ever before just who my people are and who are fosters and imposters. They're going to know because you're going to walk with that power. You're going to walk with that glory and I'm going to repair and restore things that have been broken. Many have been broken for many years but it's a time of restoration. It's a time of restoration, and restoration will come due to repentance. But those of you even in this place, and this is not just for this place in this church, it's for my body. Those of you even in this place, as you rise up and take your place, others are going to see it. Because it's been as if it's, it's like a dam. I see in the spirit now a dam. And as the things have been removed, there have been there's been a blockage. There's been hindrances even in my body, saith the Lord. There's things being removed because many have prayed. Many have trusted me. Many are stepping out with the Spirit of God and boldness and wisdom. Even though it's been hard, like in the book of Acts, they prayed. Give us boldness to speak thy word. Boldness to live this gospel. Boldness to be obedient to you. We will not be moved. We will not be careful in how we answer this thing you have said. And I have said. And we have decreed. And we have declared. So it's a time of expansion. A time of blessing. A time of the blessings of the Lord being poured out among us and even greater than anything else. This water, this water, this dam that is busted. It's the move of the Holy Ghost. It's a measure and a presence of God which is greater than all things. It's a measure and a presence and an outpouring of the Spirit of God. It's, it's been trickling, but now it's going to begin to flow. It's going to begin to flow and it's going to be again in my body, saith the Lord. In my house, not every house, but in those that have sold out to me. And those that have said, we're going to choose Jesus. We're going to follow Him and we're not going to be moved. We're not going to be moved by anything but the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. And it's going to begin to flow now. And it's going to increase in my body to where others are looking and they're saying, my, 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 so and so has changed. My, 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 so and so is different. My, 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 something's going on. Not sure what it is, but it's going to start in 2018. It's going to be this way in my body and many will know, especially from the inside to begin with. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, and praise your holy and mighty name. Sibre ende lene meseti. Este brenele es enrende este. Igem renende el enroste todo. 2019, you'll see. In 2018, it's going to start in my church, in my body, in a measure. Yes, it's begun, but it's been a trickle. They hear a little and there a little. And those of you that have been in the Spirit, you know there's more. You know there's more. You sense there's more. You pick up there's more. And then you come to church sometimes and you get around other Christians. It's not judgmental or con condemning, but you get around other people and you wonder, where's God in all of this? Where's God in all of this? Well, I'm in the hearts of my people. Not necessarily just a building, but I'm in the hearts of my people. And where two or three or more of you come together, oh, in my name, and you say, we're here for one reason and one reason only. We're here to obey God and allow Him to have His way in our lives, in this place, on this day, on any given day. For it starts at home. It does not start in the church, especially if you're already a Christian. If you're already one of my children, you don't wait on everybody and anybody else to seek me, saith the Lord. You seek me this day. And where you seek me, as I promised you in my word, you will be found and you'll see that even 2017 may not have been like it seemed at first. It may not have been like you know, on a negative note. Seemed like it was going to be better. Seemed like more was going to take place. Much hope, much hope, much hope. And things may not have met your measure. And even in your spirit, know that you've not reached the maximum capacity of the blessing, the anointing, and all that I have available for you. But you'll see that 2018 will be in a year of expansion on every front. A year of restoration, restoration, restoration. Many things are going to come back that you thought would never come back. Many things that have been lost in the church through compromise you're going to see and know that everybody's not compromised and through those that have decided not to compromise uh, things are going to be able to be restored that many have just threw their hands up and said they're lost it'll never be this way I rebuke you on this day do not say that any longer Put your trust and faith in me and believe God that my will, my plan, and my purpose is coming to pass at last. And you'll be a vessel that is conducive to my power that I'm able to use and flow through. So it'll be my glory will begin in a greater measure. My anointing will begin in a greater measure. And you'll see the gifts and demonstrations, manifestation of my spirit, miracle signs and wonders. And we know that if miracle signs and wonders take place. There'll be salvations. People recommitting their life to me, saith the Lord. And people being filled with the Holy Ghost and power in a measure like you've not seen. For now is the last days. Now is the end time revivals. And as you'll see as this dam breaks, so to speak, in this 2018, you'll see that things will begin to flow. Well, as things begin to flow, it starts in my house, in the house of the living God. But you say, I want to reach the world. I want to reach other people. I want to see the lost saved. I want to see those on the way to hell that Satan is their father. I want to see them on the way to heaven. And I want to see my God is their father. Well, it starts here. It starts now. And as we yield, the glory is going to increase. The presence is going to increase. The anointing is going to increase. Demonstrations are going to increase. Salvation is going to increase. But even when the dam is busted and it first starts, it is, it's in that immediate vicinity. We know that it's enjoyed and we know that water, I can see it flowing now. It brings things to life where it's been dry. It's been cracked and it's been dead. But you see as it keeps going and that momentum builds, it's not going to stay in the church because it can't stay in the church to reach the world but it's going to go out the doors the presence and power of God is going to go out the doors matter of fact people are going to wonder why you're still here sometimes on Sunday at 1 30 2 o'clock and you're not even going to know that it's 11 o'clock because my power and my glory and my presence is going to come out of the measure this year and it's only going to increase from there oh that you're going to be so changed when you leave you're going to be changed when you come but even greater change when you leave because you've been in my presence and you're going to see that it's going to start here in the house of the Lord but it's going to go out and it's going to go out and where it's been dry, where it's been desolate, oh, where it's been dead, there's going to be life through my glory, through my presence. Oh, and as you yield and as you obey what has been said today, you shall come to pass, but it shall come to pass, but surrender, submit to me. Not one area, not two areas, not a morning service on Sunday, not even just the Thursday night service. Give me your life. You submit and surrender to me. And I'll make you a person that you never thought you could be. But as I told the disciples, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You do not have to become in and of yourself who I've called you to be. You submit and surrender to me. I'll mold you and shape you and be all. You'll be all. All that I've called you to be. And that light that you wondered how you could ever be to this world. Oh, they'll see the light that shines from the inside out. Because you can be that man 
and you will be that man I've called you to be. You can be that woman, and you will be that woman of God that I've called you to be. Accept nothing less. Consider nothing else. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and praise your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and praise your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so worthy. You're so brokenness is the key. Brokenness is the key. You can call it a scriptural brokenness. We're not talking about brokenness from hurt, what somebody's done to you, mistreated. A brokenness, brokenness of the flesh and the spirit as well is necessary. A tender heart, a tender conscience. Those things that we have allowed to determine the, the state of our heart. Determine that we are hard-hearted and now we're, we're not prepared so ready to receive what thus saith the Holy Ghost. Not that kind of brokenness. But thank you, Father, by your word and your spirit. You said in Acts 3, 19, that through repentance, that there will be times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. And Father, I don't, I don't get the words as much as I see it. So I'm just going to say it. Even in this place, there are people that have allowed their hearts to be hardened. So hardened that they would say, well, what about this and what about that? And question everything. Father, help them to see and understand and know that you stay in the same condition and even get worse by questioning God. God is not our problem. He is our answer and our solution. Yes. Father, and I pray now that you're dealing by the Spirit of God and through the Word as we get into your Word, that you're dealing with the hearts of the people in this place, including myself, including those that are tenderhearted in a good, godly, tenderhearted way. I thank you, Father, those that have a clear, pure conscience. Father, we want to know you more. Reveal, as you said. You told them in the book of Ephesians, you said, if this, Paul said, if there's anything otherwise, you know, in our lives, we believe God that he reveal it to us. Mm -hmm. Father, we say, and we make this statement, and it's important, here we are, use us, but we want to say this too. Holy Ghost, reveal to us any and everything that's hindered us from being the people, from being the Christians and the church that you can use. Because before we go out and witness, we must first be a witness, be a Christian. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your words, for your spirit. And we know the best is yet to come as we follow you. We must add that part in because without it, it's not true. The best is not yet to come because we say so. If it's been bad and we keep doing what we've been doing, it's just going to get worse. But if we surrender to you, you can take a mess and make a masterpiece out of it. We love you. We thank you. We appreciate you. And Father, you have spoken, and we are in complete submission to you. Break us where we need to be broke. Lead us where we need to be led. Correct us where we need to be corrected. Rebuke us as necessary. We don't tell you what to do. We receive your direction and instruction. Now speak, minister, flow through your word as you so desire. And we thank you our lives will be changed, challenged, and all forever. Never to be the same again. But most importantly, we thank you all that said and done this day will give you the glory, honor, and praise that you so deserve. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated at this time. Thank God for the word of God. Thank God for the Spirit of God through Psalm chapter 37, verse 5. Psalms 37. Psalms chapter 37, <clears throat> verse 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You say, well, we'll, we'll just go on. What are you doing? It's follow the Holy Ghost. Amen. You say, well, you've got to have a plan. No, you have to be careful. Because you can have your plan. And if your plan is not God's plan, you can quench the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we want to follow Him. The Lord's told me. Because I'm a planning person. I like to know everything ahead of time. The Lord said, just be prepared to be ready. That's our responsibility. Amen. Be prepared to be ready. We're going to Psalms 37, verse 5. And he said, be prepared and be ready. Because there's times you're going to have the whole service prayed out ahead of time and know what's going to go on. And there's other times it's going to move by impulse of the Holy Spirit. Unction is the best word of the Holy Spirit. And when I do, just move. So that's just what happened. And we're just going to step out. And flow with the Holy Ghost. And our best days are yet ahead of us as we follow Him together. Amen? Thank God who we're trying to be like. We're trying to be like God the Father. Jesus.
Jesus Christ the Son. He's our example. We're here to imitate and follow Him. Amen. We're not endeavoring to be like everybody else and we're coming to a place in the body of Christ. Definitely in this, in this church, many people today are looking for programs, processes, and procedures. And there's nothing in them for you. And there's nothing in them for your children. Amen. Nothing. Not a little bit. And if you hang around here for a little while, you're going to find out from the Word and the Spirit, you're going to find out that God's way is the only way and it's the best way. Because we have taken in the body of Christ, and I know now because we have become not everybody, but many people have become so deceived that even when they look for a church, that's what they look for. They look for programs, processes, and procedures. What do you have for me? What group do you have for me? What do you have for my children? What does that matter? Because if you're not taught to know God and in His presence, none of that's going to help you anyways. It's irrelevant. Nothing. We've got to get back to teaching people how to know God. Nothing else works until we do then there are things that can be led by God. You say, well, I need this relationship and that relationship. And the church has become utterly social at the cost of the actual social uh, communication and relationship that we need. It's social with everybody else. We know everybody just about. All sorts of fellowship except for the fellowship that matters. Amen. That's the one with God. Amen? Amen? But now we've come to a place where we look for these things and it's very troubling because it's not what Jesus looked for and it's not what he promoted you say, well, people are important, yes. And there's two types of people that you should hang with. Two primary types, and this is biblically back, but it's something the Holy Ghost told me. To me, anybody else is a waste of time. You need to be around two different kinds of people. The ones that can help you or either the ones you can help, or both. A lot of people spend a lot of their time with people even in the church that they've made their decisions. Life's just what it is, and they have no desire to move on with God. Well, you're wasting their time and yours. Amen? I've had different people before say, well, why don't you, you know, mess with so-and-so or this one or that one or I notice you do this and I'm not going to say anything to attack anybody. But very often and almost always the best reason you would say or I would use is this. There's different people and we tell our children this. Not to attack anybody, but it's the truth. So well, why don't we do this, that, or the other? This is the statement that we make. We're not going in the same direction they are. Amen. That's what we say. We don't attack people, but we simply say at this stage in our life, we're going in different directions. You need to know what direction you're going in. Amen. You need to know who you're following. And you need to know who you're headed, where you're headed. Now that's not to attack anybody, but there's people that add to you or they're going to take away from you. There's people that's going to help you accomplish the will of God for your life. This works both ways. It's not just about using people. Amen. You need to help other people too. But there's people that will distract you from what God is saying to you. You should be able to, at any given moment, me or anybody else should ask you right now, what's God saying to you at this moment? You should be able to answer that just like that. You should know. Amen. Right now. Doesn't matter if nobody else in this church knows, if you're in a right, not only right relationship, but fellowship with God, you are always working on something at all times. Because God's in always endeavoring to bring you into His perfect will, plan and purpose for your life. Amen? The title of this message this morning, which I didn't plan any of that we've done so far, so it's, it's not that relevant because this is not my church, it's God's church. Amen. Amen? And so I go to Pastor Jason's church, well that's right in one sense, but the reality of it is that I'm the under shepherd. Jesus is the chief shepherd. This is God's church. Amen? Amen? And we want to keep it that way. The title is going to be this, The Direction of the Holy Ghost. I asked him for a title, he didn't give it to me until this morning at, at the house, but the title is this, It's Your Move. It's your move. There's a balance. We're not going to get off in it, off on it, but at the same time, there's a balance. People say there's a waiting on God, and I'm waiting on God. Well, sometimes that's true. Sometimes it's, it's true that we're praying uh, up, we're in His presence, and we're not going. You don't go until you know. You don't move and make decisions until you've heard from God, right? But at the same time, in saying that, sometimes we've not heard because we've not positioned ourselves to hear from God. Sometimes we've not moved because maybe the direction that we've got, we don't like. We had an individual. Y'all in Psalms 37 yet? If you're not, you're in trouble. We had an individual years ago. My, my dad uh, was my pastor. And he was, you know, he was, especially when he preached, it was, it was fairly cut and dried. It was anointed. I'm not saying it wasn't in love, but it was bold in the Holy Ghost. And, and it was kind of, honestly, it's the way the church is supposed to be. People don't know this anymore. I don't say this to condemn but only to correct us, people don't know this anymore because they don't get in the Word. Most people today wouldn't listen to Jesus if He was preaching instead of me. They would leave the church quicker if Jesus was preaching than if I'm preaching. 
Because he spoke the truth. Who was in love with him? He did not cut any corners. He laid it right on the line. Amen? Even with people that he loved. You remember, we're not going there. But in John chapter 6, you remember the latter part of it there. You know, because of the message and what he was teaching. Many had, had gone back, the Bible says, it's the latter part of John chapter 6. Many that were following him were following him no more. They had gone back. Right? They got offended. How do we know they was offended? Because Jesus knew all things. He's John 3, 34 said, Jesus had the spirit without measure. And, and he knew that they were offended. And plus, they were murmuring. Murmuring and complaining is the language of offended people. Always. Amen? Amen. Did it help you for yourself and other people? People that always murmur and complain, they're offended people. And then you got his disciples that stuck with him. They didn't, they wasn't back talking. They wasn't acting up at that point. They did it other times. But they weren't doing anything wrong. And the others left. And Jesus, what did he do? He turned around and looked at, at his disciples. Well, you remember what he told them? He said, are y'all going to go too? Now in the church today, we said, well, y'all just had, you had two or three people leave. You should be coddling everybody else. Jesus said, are y'all going to leave too? And they said, no, where else would we go? And he said, good, because I chose 12 of you, one of them was a devil. <laughs> he said, I don't believe he said that. You can read me, get on. We're not going to it right now. But we had somebody, so we're talking about following God, not following ourselves, not following other people. Who's the people you should follow? The people that God leads you to. This morning, it's not about my voice. I'm not your God. I'm not your Lord. I'm your pastor this morning. If God placed you here, but what you want to hear from me is you want to hear the voice of God. Amen. you got to look in and through and past the person even that God's placed you with because the purpose, everything you need in your life, no matter who you listen to, it's not about that person. No more than it's about you. It's about what's God saying. We had a guy that come to the church. I've never pastored him. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he was there even when I... Uh, me and Arlie took over pastoring the church but this guy was very well educated into music all sorts of stuff nothing wrong with that in and of itself <clears throat> but he came to the church and, and, and he, he, I remember I could tell you where he was at I'm going to because some people will remember if they knew the position that he had because he did help in a certain area but he came and, and he said he, he knew that God sent him there and daddy preached one of those messages Pastor Danny he preached one of those messages that, that it brought you to a decision it's how Jesus preached it's how Paul preached it's how Peter preached, right? It's how Stephen preached when they stoned him to death. In Acts chapter 7, we are supposed to be brought to a decision when we come to church. It should, we should preach in such a way that you can't think too much about your fried chicken while you're here. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. you got some decisions to make. That's not popular, but it's true. This guy came in, and I don't even know the message that he preached. I just heard his testimony afterwards. He wasn't really happy at all with the message that was brought forth. Even though he felt like God called him there. And the whole, he didn't walk out during the service, but he said, the whole time I was here, gave his testimony later. He said, the whole time I was here that first time, that, that your father, he didn't say my father because he wasn't talking to me. I think it was a testimony among several of us. But he said, the whole time that Pastor Danny was preaching and teaching, he said, man, he said, I just said, I cannot wait till the end of this service because I will never come back to this church again. I will never listen to this man preach again as long as I live. And he said, I was determined the whole time. He said, the service was over, and I left and was headed out the doors with no intention of ever stepping foot back into that church and never even talking to that pastor again. He said, and the Lord God, the Holy Ghost spoke to me, and he said, I told you if you want to know God, he's your pastor. And that's where you're going to church. That man had a decision to make. Because there was more than one voice talking to him. And of course, his voice, and I'm sure the devil was helping him. But of course, his flesh said, I don't want to hear that. I don't hear nothing about that. I don't want to be challenged in those areas of my life. But how much of God, how much of you does God want? Oh. He wants all of you. He wants your heart, your life, your mouth, your, your everything. Your body, present bodies to, to him as a <coughs> sacrifice. He wants uh, renewed minds. We know that. Born again spirits. He wants your finances. He wants everything. Amen. And, and the Holy Ghost spoke to him and he said, Well, he said, if you want to know God, he is your pastor. Make a long story short, he stayed for several years. He come and, and he was a, I, I remember his name because his name was spirit, spelled weird. And in the very early days, I wasn't a, a, I wasn't a pastor. At that time, I was on the accounting crew there. And I remember him, he was a, a good tither and giver. He was faithful and he got faithful to the church in every area. But he had a decision to make. Are you going to follow God or are you going to do what you want to do? Are you going to follow God or are you going to do what everybody else wants to do? Are you going to follow God or are you going to do what's popular? We'll just go ahead and tell you this ahead of time. We won't be a church like most of the ones you know. It's, not, it's going to be worse than it is now. It's not going to get better if that's what you're looking for. 
Amen? Amen. We give you fair notice ahead of time for everybody, even this here. This is the place you want to be if you want to know God. If you want to go to a place in your relationship with Him that you've never been before. If you truly want life change and to see lives change, this is a good place to be. Amen? Amen? But we've not been placed here by God the Father in the body or in this area to play patty cake, but to obey Him. Amen? And we're going to move out. Now, there are people even today, here today, that need direction in their lives. You've been in much thought and conversation about your next steps. You've been talking about it a lot. Maybe with your spouse, maybe with yourself, you know, thinking to yourself. You've had many things to think on and many different paths to ponder. And this is from the Holy Ghost. I wrote this down when I was praying this morning. If you continue to do this, you will stay in this place of no direction and confusion. God doesn't operate in your natural reasonings. Amen? He doesn't operate in an unrenewed mind. That's not how you hear it. Spiritual things, 1 Corinthians 2 tells us, are revealed how? And, and God, the Holy Ghost, speaks to our spirit. Amen? So I'm going to figure this out. You can't figure God out. He's bigger than your mind. He's bigger than your thinking. His ways are bigger than your ways. Right? Thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And we can put on the mind of Christ. But if you continue to do this, you'll stay in this place of no direction and confusion. Because it's not how God works. Psalm, Psalms 37, verse 5 says this. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. In the Hebrews 15, 56, for this word commit... It's also like casting your cares and rolling your anxieties and worries over on Him. So first uh, definition for commit your way into the Lord is to, to roll down or to roll away. But it says by definition, in, in commit thy way unto the Lord, it says to turn over to Him. You're not making your decisions anymore if you're following God. You're turning over the leadership and control of your life to God the Father. To commit myself unto the Lord, to commit my ways unto the Lord, means that I understand that my steps are ordered by the Lord, and what I'm going to do is what He tells me to do. Where I'm going to go to church is not I'm going to flip a coin, or I'm going to have a little arrow. No, God, where do you want me to be? Who is my pastor? Who is my church family? Who am I supposed to marry? Now, you guys that's already married, don't pray that. <laughs> but who am I supposed to marry? There's been different things with Jay, and we tell our children that I'm married at this time. We tell them all the time, no, there's things I'm going to tell you because it's what's right. And I don't care if nobody else will tell you or if other people won't tell their children. We're going to tell you in love. We're going to give you all of the ammunition, everything you need from the Word to make the right decision. Some things are cut and dry, and you just tell them, this is what the Bible says, and this is what you do. This is how you live. There's no excuse. There's no nothing else about it. No ifs, ands, buts, or these. This is what it is. Right? But there's other decisions. And I've dealt with Jay a lot about this. Of course, he's older than, than Lorna McKenzie. But there's different things that Jay would want me to tell him. And I'll tell him, no. No. I will tell you how to get that decision. How to get that direction. But you have to hear God for yourself concerning your life. You have to know today that this is the Word and this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. That's good. You, you need to ask God to you know, deal with your heart if you were in this church even up till now this morning and you hadn't felt the presence of God because He's here. Yes, yes, yes. Amen? He's here because I'm here. Amen. He's here because you're here. Yes. Amen? Where does, where does the Holy Spirit live? He lives in you. He lives in me. Right? So we brought him with us to church, but he can only move so much as we let him. Yeah. And as long as we're in control of our lives, he's not. So long as we're leading our lives, he's not. So long as we're following the crowd, we're not following him. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's, it's a joke of mine, but I've heard a lot of people catch on to it now. And somebody else probably, I'm sure they started it. But, but I, I just sat around for years and I do more listening. You might not know that if you just hear me from the pulpit or at church because I'm the main one speaking here because I'm the pastor. But outside the church, I'm not the loudest person in the room. 
I'm usually sitting around listening. I don't, I don't, I don't try to go in and take anything over anywhere. What I say, what God tells me to say, and other than that, I don't have very much to say. But, but in listening to people, very many times you hear this, it doesn't matter whether it's decisions or what's popular or what we're doing or, you know, what you should take, drink lemon, orange, green, you know, purple, brown juice, and this will do this to your body. And, and, and then this is the statements that are made. Well, they say this and they say that and they say the other. And I've been trying to figure out for years, who are they? I don't know what God says. I don't care about man's formula or even what man's think, man thinks. What's God saying to me? What's God saying to you? Amen? We're going to turn our lives over to God. Amen. Pondering, thinking, weighing, and figuring things out in and of yourself, that's not trusting God. That actually, even though you may have a desire to move forward, that's how you stay where you're at and you can't move forward. Because you need direction from God, but you're looking for, for direction even from yourself. Because you're endeavoring to figure it out. We'll give you a further definition than that. We're going to turn our lives, turn ourselves over to God. Amen. Now Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. You know, they're close and many of you can quote this and know where it's at. That's good. But, but be careful to think that you know anything, excuse me, everything about any passage. Because you go back to it and the Holy Ghost will give you more revelation. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. We know this, but verse 5 says... Trust in the Lord. Now that doesn't say trust in others. It doesn't say trust in yourself. You know, people say, I'm a pretty smart guy. I'm a pretty smart girl. Compared to who? Now if we compare ourselves to God, it'd be wise to trust Him. Because we got a word of His wisdom. He's got all of it. Amen. We got a, a word of His knowledge. He's got all of it. He knows the future better than you know today and yesterday. Amen. Amen. He has the answer and he is the answer. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord. Now this passage is really opposite if you break it in half. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. At this present time in your life, you're doing one or the other of these. You're either trusting in the Lord with all your heart and if we got into the heart part here, trusting in the Lord with all your heart, we know that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man, the Bible says, think he'll receive anything from the Lord. Amen? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. You can say, well, I know that God's saying or impressing this, but, 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 let me weigh this out. What about this? What about that? Well, that's double-mindedness. Because you might even partly listen to God, partly consider God, but He don't want part of you. He wants all of you. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not. That word lean in the Hebrew, it means to rely upon or rely on. Do not rely on. Do not depend on your own understanding. Now to help you even further. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Don't rely upon your own understanding. That word means your own insight. Your own discernment. Your own wisdom. But I put this here. I, I put it here because it's the definition. I didn't put it there. I put it there, but it's in the Hebrew for understanding. Trust not Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. By definition, your understanding right there is good sense. If you do what makes sense to you, you will miss God. That's a fact. Because we don't follow good sense. We don't follow popularity. We don't follow. You say, why is all this necessary? Because there's people that's discouraged and confused and don't know the next step to take. And they do not realize the problem is not that you don't know the next step to take. It's that you got the wrong process and procedure to begin with to find out the next step. So if we don't back up and get this part fixed and realize the next move is ours and the move you need to take today, you say, well, that's my whole problem is, is that I don't know the move to take. The reason we don't know the move to take is because the move to take is commitment to God. That's the move you need to make. You don't need to try to figure it out. You need to simply say, God, I realize, I see, and I know that I don't have all the answers. 
That I don't know every decision to make. That I don't know every which way to go. Now that's just doubt and unbelief if you leave it there. But that's how we're leaving it. Right? But I know that you said if any man or woman would like wisdom, ask for it, and you give it to him liberally and freely. I put my trust and faith in you. I surrender my life to you. If there's anything in my life that is a hindrance for me hearing from you, knowing what you're saying, and receiving your direction, show it to me and I'll correct it. And then you'll be able to see, and you'll be able to know, and you'll have the direction that you've never had before. I went home last Sunday. I don't know when we're going to get to this message. We're trying to start on it. Go to Luke chapter 5. I went home last Sunday and began to pray. God moved, I think. It was, it was a message that never crossed my mind. Uh, but on my heart, by the Holy Spirit, we talked about freedom from abuse and then we ministered to people by the Holy Ghost Ghost at the end of the service. When I went home, and, and Lord and them had somewhere to go, normally we don't, none of us, go anywhere immediately when we get home anyways. Maybe that evening or that night. We usually rest or, or whatever. And, and, and immediately when I got home and I laid down in the bed and not go to sleep. But Larley, what y'all went somewhere Sunday evening? Yeah, they went somewhere immediately after after uh, we got back. And I was praying about the service. I couldn't sleep anyways, couldn't rest anyways. And I was praying about the service, and I was just thanking God, you know, for what He'd done. I was praying for you guys, especially those of you that were ministered to, and just know that you'd heard from God. Know that the Spirit of God had ministered <laughs> to your heart, and just knowing that not only were you free, but as you left this place. That, that, that you would have the wisdom and, and direction to make God the decision to increase, you know, in this freedom and this liberty that God had so provided. And then I began to pray some about the move of the Holy Ghost. And I began to pray about uh, just being so thankful, and, you know, about what He was doing, the way He's moving in the church. And, 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 you know, if you're going to move forward in your life, you can't be ungrateful. You need to be thankful about the here and now. Be thankful about where God's brought you from. Amen. Amen. The language of faith is not complaining. It's thanksgiving. Right? Yeah. Thank you, Father. You're so good. You say, well, what's the big deal about that? About not, well, you think, you, you say everybody's got problems. Yes. Everybody's got problems and things they're dealing with, but as you magnify God and give Him the glory, honor, and praise He so deserves, instead of griping and complaining, God becomes bigger. He's already bigger in, than every problem. But to you, we should say, it's just like we can say, as we praise God, what's taking place? He's being magnified. Well, in reality, God can't get any bigger than what He is. He's already everywhere. Amen. And He's already omnipresent. We know that. But at the same time, He becomes bigger than you. He becomes bigger than your life. He becomes bigger than what you're facing and bigger than your problem. Right? You thank God He's the answer. You thank God for those things. And I was praying about the move of God. And I was just laying in the bed in my bedroom. And I was praying about the move of God. And He said, there's no problem with the move of God. There's no problem with the Spirit of God. He said, the wind of the Spirit is blowing now. And I was laying there and had a vision. And, and that Sunday evening last, last week. And, and I was inside of a house. And he was showing me what he was doing in his church. It's on a bit much bigger scale than just here. But it's what he's doing right here. Because you see God's been moving. You dig in, God moves. Isn't that coincidental? You know, we get more serious and, and God begins to move. But he said, the wind of my Spirit is blowing always. He said, but inside the house. He said, and this is what I saw. I was inside the house, and he said, you can look outside the window. And you can see, you know, if you are in tune with things of the Spirit, you can see some things right now. Yeah. You can see, and you know there's more than what any of us have been walking in. Yeah. You know, anybody that's in tune with the Spirit knows that right now, even as good as it is, we are not belittling what God's doing. We just know we got some areas to work on and move forward. We're not belittling God. We're talking about we need to continue to trust Him. We know, as good as it is, we're just scratching the surface. Amen. That's reality. Amen. Spiritual reality <coughs> is the truth. On the best day is the truth. But it's only going to be better from here. But I was in the house, and he said, this is what's been happening, because he's dealt with me individually about changing things in my life. And I've endeavored to do it every day. He said, the wind of my spirit and the move of my spirit, and I could see it outside. You know, just blowing. He said, it's blowing continually. He said, I'm not your problem. And I'm not my church's problem. He said, but my church has had the window closed. He said, they can know there's more. They may even see in the spirit that there's more. But there's adjustments that must be made in order for that window to be lifted. And you to experience the reality of the move of God. Of the presence of God. And to walk in the glory like never before. And he said, as you've made these minor adjustments, you'll see that the window's been open. But it's just about that much. But he said, this is the way it's going to happen. As you're willing and obedient, he said, the wind of the Spirit of God is always moving. 
Oh, we can quench him in our individual lives, you understand. We can quench him in this church, but we don't stop God. Right? Even if he don't move here, he's willing to move to his people that call upon him. Amen? And, and, and he said, as you're obedient and you do these things that I'm dealing with you about, he said, this window, you said, is there a real window? Probably not, but it's a vision for him to show me things. He said, this window is being opened up. And he said, as this window's opened up, he said, every step, every, you know, little fiber that it opens, every inch it opens, of course, what's going to happen? Well, God's been moving. We're going to enjoy more than ever before. We're going to see more than ever before. We're going to expand in measures we've never seen before. But what must happen? There must be an adjustments in our lives. This is reality. It's not popular, but it's reality. Amen. Amen? Yes. Concerning spiritual things, we have to be careful because it's like wanting a promotion on your job and being the last one there and the first one to leave and taking every extra day off you can. It doesn't work that way. Yes. Amen? Amen? You don't sleep on the job and get promotion. There's a place in the spirit and a place in the things of God that we've not yet been, but we're going. And even the people in here that's been seeking God, that will not offend them because no matter how close you get to God, you'll know without a shadow of a doubt, there's more. Yes. And the more you get, the more you want. Amen. Amen. Go to Luke chapter 5. <coughs> the Lord said today, it's your move. Amen. Amen. <coughs> in all thy ways, we're going to acknowledge Him. And he's going to direct thy path. That was verse 6. <laughs> we must understand that we don't have to understand. We must understand that we don't have to understand in order to move forward with God. We <coughs> only have to commit and submit our lives to Him. Direction follows total commitment. You don't have to know why you are where you are for any other reason other than to know God put me here. Yes. I'm doing what God told me to do. That's all that matters. Let Him do the rest. In all my ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct thy paths. Or are we acknowledging Him in all of our ways? Many people that have been hurt. What you do naturally, not spiritually and not supernaturally, but people that have been hurt. And this is why it's so important that you get into the Word. This is why offense is one of the biggest things that will stop you from gaining any ground with God. When people get hurt, the natural thing is to cramp down, is to put up walls and say, I'm not ever going to allow that to happen again. Well, the walls that keeps the hurt out will also keep the help out. <coughs> That's why you have to be careful. We serve a God that said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He's a God that never is here to hurt you. And He is the Lord God who changes not. It doesn't matter if everybody else has forsaken you. Like Paul said, all men have forsaken me or forsook me. But God did not. God stood with me. You can trust God. No matter how bad you've been hurt. No matter how bad you've been broken. No matter how many walls you got up. Don't put up walls to keep God out. He's your answer. He's your hope. He's your help. He's your refuge. He's your strength. He's our rock in Him that we trust. He's our everything. Our lives are going to change. You said, what's, what's the necessity of that? We don't realize what we're doing, but we have to trust somebody, and it starts with Him. He's the one we trust. And then you'll place people to understand in your life that are not like those that have hurt you. They're there to help you. Many people say, well, I just picked the wrong friends. I just picked the wrong men. I just picked the wrong women. No, you picked the wrong God. You can't be God of your life. Amen. That's why you keep making those decisions. Amen? Mm -hmm. You don't pick the wrong men, the wrong women. We say all kind of stuff. And the world is fine, but out in the church is foolishness. You shouldn't say those sorts of things. But it's a reality because we pick. When you surrender to God, and He's not just your Savior, but He's your Lord. He's the Lord of my life. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's directing me. I'm laying down my life. And I'm surrendered to Him. I'm crucified with Christ. Amen? Amen. But I thank God not only have I been crucified with Christ, the same Spirit that raised from the dead is quickened and made alive my mortal body. The life which I now live in Galatians 2, verse 20, the latter part of what He said. The life which I now live, I live how? <coughs> by the faith or by faith in God, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a good passage for you to know, Galatians 2, verse 20. But in Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, verse 1, we know this story. I, I, I go back to it often. Matter of fact, the first service that I ever preached in this church was, was this, this passage. And it was titled all the first Sunday morning. But, but we go back here and now. It came to pass, verse 1, Luke 5, that is the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were going out of them and, and were washing their nets. What had they been doing? 
Look, that's verse 3. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, that's Peter, and, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So they, have they been fishing all night? Yes. yes, and fishing is what they did. They knew how to fish. They knew when to fish. They knew what kind of bait to use. You know when we get in the most trouble? When we think we know. Amen? Amen? So I know what to do. I got this under control. Do you? You do until you don't. God doesn't want just the big areas of your life. He wants all of you. And our lives are going to go that much smoother. We're going to make so much impact and effect for, the, for God the Father, the Son Jesus Christ, in this earth when we give it all to Him. Amen? So, so they know how to fish and how to do these things. And in verse 4, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a drop for a catch. And Simon answered and said, so, so Jesus gave them direction, we could say, before I say this, in verse 4, they've been fishing, they know when to fish, and we'll see this in the scripture in a minute, but they already did what they know to do, and they didn't have much impact, much effect. Maybe that's the way you felt like in your life. You know that you're not reaching. The Holy Ghost told me concerning my life and in the ministry. He said, it's up to you whether you operate at the maximum capacity of my anointing and the fullness of God the Father. He said, it's up to you, not me. He said, you can, but you must surrender to me. Smith Wilberforth made this statement, and I believe it's more true. It's not because he said it, because the Holy Ghost said it, and brought it back to my remembrance. He said, the greatest issue and barrier that we have in the body of Christ from truly experiencing Christ is a lack of yieldedness, which is the same thing as surrender and submission. Whatever we hold on to holds us back from knowing God. Holds us back from accomplishing His will. Whatever you value above God. So I don't value anything above God. The Word says, where your treasure is, there, is your, there your heart is also. We know what's important to you. How? We know what's important to you by what gets your attention. Amen? How do we know what's most important to you? It's a no-brainer. What gets most of your attention is what's most important to you. Amen? Who do you live for? If you live for God, then He's most important to you. If you live for yourself, you're most important to you. If you live for others, others are most important to you. In today's society, that's a noble thing. It's not noble with God to put other people out there. It's not noble. It's called sin with God. Amen? Many people put their family above God. It's not noble with God. It's disobedience with God. We can't truly follow Him that way. As a matter of fact, as we'll see if we get there, the greatest thing you can do for your husband, for your wife, for your children, for your family, extended as well, is to give yourself all to God. Because yes. the greatest impact you're going to have on your family is giving yourself all to Him. Yes. Amen? You can't fully be all God's called you to be without fully surrendering to God. So they, they've done what they know to do, but now Jesus tells them to do something, and you need to understand in verse 4, He, he gave them direction that as we went back and, and we said, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. Definition for understanding was good sense. Jesus is telling them to do something that makes no good sense. Just like that guy I told you, he was never coming back to the church again there in Bono Christian Fellowship at that time. He said, I'm never coming back to this church. I've never listened to that pastor because in the natural it made no good sense to him to come back. You follow good sense. Yours or anybody else is going to get in trouble. What's God saying to you? There's been numerous times in my life in certain direction, the Holy Spirit spoke and said, you know, different things and then I would question it and I would say, you know, that doesn't make any sense. You know, I'm not being disrespectful, but you can talk to God, believe it or not. And I'll just be saying, God, I don't understand. Not that I have to understand, but sometimes you can pray things out. You can get direction. Not always. Not always. You can always get direction. But very often when you get direction, if you stay in your prayer closet long enough, God will show you the hows and the whys and the outcome. That's not all the time. Especially when it comes to other people. Sometimes the Lord will tell you very respectfully <coughs> and in love, I'm not going to tell you that because it doesn't concern you. I place them on your heart. We pray for them in this particular way. The Holy Spirit will help you, and I'm not going to tell you anything else about it. Even this week, there's Lord, the things the Lord told me, it was not about other people. <coughs> it's about myself. Things I've prayed about for two or three years. I should say prayed about and thought about them. You know, if we do less thinking about stuff and more praying about it, we wouldn't be as confused. We wouldn't have so, so little direction. But I was praying about things, and the Lord said, don't you go to Acts chapter 3, excuse me, Acts chapter 13, starting in verse 1, and he said, then don't you go to Acts chapter 4. 
And he showed me exactly where to go. And he said, now this is what I want you to do concerning this. And because you've done this, this is this what I'm showing you. And he said, I also want to tell you this. If you don't handle this just the right way, it's going to be a hindrance instead of a blessing, even though it's the will of God for my life. And he said, I want you to keep your mouth shut. Don't say a word. You know what God means when he says that? He means exactly what he says. You know what happened if God tells you things? And you go tell everybody everything God tells you? He won't tell you anything else. Who's I? I just don't believe that. I've seen it happen repeatedly. Amen? You say, why? Because what do we focus on? We focus on trusting God, and that's true. We need to be taught how to trust God. That's right in the church. There's a flip side of that. God needs to be able to trust you. Amen? You give the Spirit, God tells you something in the Spirit, how to pray for somebody else's life, and you go put it on Facebook, I can assure you one thing. It'll be quite a while before you hear about anybody else again, or even are led to pray for anybody else again. Because those things are not funny to God. He considers people's lives important. Amen? And our responsibility is not to expose anybody anyways. We pray for people and we let God deal with them. God's not into exposing business. That's not our job. Right? <coughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus, and praise your holy and mighty name. God is good. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Father, and praise your holy and mighty name. You say, well, why did you say that? I don't know why, but I know right now by the Spirit of God, there's somebody that's been pondering things. You say, I know this, that, or the other, and I'm going to expose it with the Holy Ghost saying you need to keep your mouth closed. It's not your job. It's not your place. You say, you don't even know who I am. God does. And I didn't know that until just now. Nobody said a word to me. Be quiet. It's not your business. You turn other people over to God. You're not their judge and you're not their jury. Amen? And very often you don't know what you're talking about. Because things are not always as they seem. Natural human nature believes the worst of people. That's what it does. When you walk in the love of God, he said you'll be ever ready to believe the best of people. Natural human nature does not look for the best in people. It looks for the worst. And I found this in life and in leadership. Whatever you look for, you'll find it. No matter what it is. Even a good person, if you get focused on bad things, you can find some things that are not right. And if you look hard enough, you'll see things that's not even there. Amen? And again, sometimes things are not like they seem. You can find certain things about people and even look a certain way and not even be the truth. And you find out later that you're glad you didn't say anything because you would look like a fool if you had. <clears throat> so I know this. How do you know? But so-and-so so, so told me. Well, how, how do you know that they know? So they never lied to me before. Well, maybe you just haven't told them yet. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I know some people that can lie pretty good. Amen? Got a lot of practice. Luke chapter 5. <clears throat> Luke chapter 5. Y'all already there. We already done. He said, so God's told him to do some things. Jesus did. This made no sense. <clears throat> Whatsoever. And, and in verse 5 he said, Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've told all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, nevertheless. In other words, he said, we're not going to go with what we know. We're not going to go with good sense. Nevertheless, at thy word. We ask you this morning, is your move? Are you going to do what God instructs you to do? Or are you going to surrender and give your whole life to him? He told him in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, 19 there. When he's speaking to the disciples, people say, well, so and so is this way, that way, the other way. They messed up. God's looking for messed up people. Yes. Not God wants everybody to come to church in suits and ties and pretty dresses. That's fine. You get fully sanctified and, and, and you come on up and all this sort of stuff and leadership positions. But God took people that was messed up, had nothing, do nothing. He said, follow me and I'll make you. Yes, amen. We have people even around here, I love you dearly. They say, well, no, we wouldn't let so-and-so come in our church like that. You the one needs to stay home. Yes, amen. And your preachers say these things. We're not going to let people come in here and take over and that sort of stuff. I'm not going to let people come in here drinking, but if they come in here smelling like alcohol, I'm going to have a problem with you if you run them off. Yes, they need help. Yes. They need Jesus. Amen. It's one thing somebody comes and causes trouble. That's different. We, God is looking for messed up people. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? That's what he's looking for. He said, follow me and I'll make you. Yes. Today in your life, you may be a Christian. You may be saved and spirit-filled. That's great. But that doesn't mean we're following God. But don't try to make yourself. Don't try to make a name for yourself. It's not about your name. It's about a name that's above every name. Yes. It's about His name. It's not about your reputation. He made Himself of no reputation. It's about Him. Not about me. Not about you. It's all about Him. Yeah. Right? That's a good message in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I said, thou word out. It doesn't make any sense. But yes, I will let down the net. <clears throat> and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes in their net break. Isn't it amazing how God's way 
works better than any other way. I'll just tell you this. Since we don't got off so many times, if you get off in the spirit, you're good. If you get off the flesh, you're in trouble. The church this year, you just, just watch things unfold. Everything about Resurrection Life Church is going to expand. Amen. Everything. Amen. Absolutely everything. There's some things that had to get in line, many of them with me, before we could properly move forward. Because we haven't needed what we've had and more buildings, more money, more anything. People think money's the problem, bills the problem, more people. No, no, no. no. Trust in God is where you want to be. Yeah. Making sure you're in the will of God, then everything else you have. Remember, seek Him first. Then all these things are added to you. Wherever He's not first, the first thing that needs to be done is Him made first. That's first, <coughs> right? Then everything will begin to flow. This will be the best year that we've had, 2018. Monumental year. Turning point year. I say turning point. We haven't been going backwards. But it's been good. But it's even going to get better. And it's going to shock you the things that happen concerning spiritual things this year in the church. You say, well, what about so and so and so and so? What about God? Amen. I don't choose people. I choose God. Amen. Then God places people with us. Yeah. Amen? Amen? That we're supposed to have. We've got to have a heart fright. And they beckon. They, they, they caught these state. Verse 6. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes in the net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. You know, that you don't want to sink, but if you're going to be sinking, that's the way you want to sink. They so blessed and got so much stuff like the children of Israel went when they're gathering up the spoils, right? <clears throat> and, and took them three days to gather it up. But then we got, they, they, you say, well, I want to be a blessing to other people to give your life to God. Nevertheless, at thy word, trust Him, you'll be a blessing to your family. You'll be a blessing on your job. You won't even notice it maybe about yourself, but even the people around you that's known you for years, your language will change. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Your actions will change. Your attitude, which is a reflection of your heart, it will change. Everything about you will change. And there's something different about you. They're going to want to know. And when they want to know, you'll be able to tell them. That's how you witness. Yeah. We're going around hard as we can trying to witness and get everybody we can twist their arm to receive Jesus. And the reason they don't want to receive Jesus is because they know us. And they say, well, why would I want to receive that Jesus? This made no more of a difference in your life than he has. But as we seek him first, then people are going to see Jesus in our life in a measure they never had before. God's working a restoration and a work in many of your lives. So long as you cooperate, the best is yet to come. They beckoned unto their partners. We read that. And then verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Verse 11 says this, And when they had brought their ships to land, they were fishermen. Amen? That's what they did for a living. They brought their ships to land. They forsook all and followed him. They forsook all. They were blessed by obedience, not understanding, not reasoning. They stopped what they were doing, forsook all, and followed Him. Understand this, in closing this morning, total commitment to God and His plan must come first. They forsook all. You, there's no trial run. You know, some of these church signs, I think one of them that so many people put up, they think it's cute, it's really dumb, it says, try Jesus. You know, if you don't like him or something, the devil will take you back. You don't try Jesus. Amen. That's unscriptural and ignorance. Amen. Try Jesus? Amen. What do you mean? Try Jesus. You choose Jesus. Yeah. G choosing Jesus is an all-in decision. Amen. If it's not all-in, you haven't chosen him. Amen. You don't try him. Amen? Amen? We don't have a six-month probation period like you might on your job. You either are or you're not. And we are. Amen. Amen? No trial run. No figuring it out. That doesn't mean you don't grow as you go. I understand that. Your move today is your move. If you're going to have clear direction and instruction, your move today is total commitment and surrender. It is impossible. You can write it down for later. Philippians 3, 13 and 14, Paul talking. It's impossible to hold back and move forward. What do you give up? We're celebrating Jesus this Christmas. Amen. This Christmas coming up next week, the first of the next week. And, and we know that God gave all. Jesus gave all. 
He didn't die for himself. He didn't. He's our example. We imitate him. We follow him. And we're not dying spiritually. We're spiritually not dying, not dead. Spiritually alive, but we do die to self. We do deny flesh. We do bring this flesh into subjection, mortify the deeds of the flesh. It is like Jesus in the garden. Not my will, not what I want, not what I desire in Luke 22, 42, but your will be done. Not what I want, Father, but your will. What you want. That is to be the cry of our heart. And you will never have true joy. Never have true peace. Never have true fullness. I, I just, and the best word, and people use it in different ways. I understand that. But the best word that I could use, and I don't even know why I use that, but, but in your relationship with God, if you ever know true intimacy, it's in fellowship with the Father. Yeah. It is the most precious, pristine, soft, bold, in us, everything is just, you can't, there's no words to explain being in his presence and what it does to you. Amen. That's for everybody. Amen. Not just a pastor, not just a prophet, evangelist, apostle, teacher. It's for everybody. Amen. You can know God because of what Jesus has come and done for you. <coughs> to forsake, or it says forsook, is the same word as forgive. It means they forsook all. And I'm not going to finish my message so y'all don't, but y'all good anyways, right? Because you're getting the word. But they forsook all, and they followed Him. It means to forgive, to pardon, to cancel. As a matter of fact, in, in the Greek, forsake and forsook and forgive is the exact same Greek word. But it also means to forsake all means to leave and to abandon. I can't hold on to me and my past life and walk with God. It's impossible. Mm -mm. Right? Okay. What are you going to give to God in 2018? Matter of fact, I think it'd be foolish to wait to 2018. I think the best day to start is today. Yes, Amen. You may sit here and say, I don't know anymore what to do, decision-wise, as I did before I came. You don't have to. You know what to do to find out the decision. Yes. You give it to God. You trust God. You cut off the TV. You cut off the phone. You cut off even everybody else that you love. You know, it happened been recently, and I thank God that it hadn't been. But there used to be times in my life when Laura Lee would say, don't you need to go to the church and study and pray? He said, well, all the wives and all the husbands, they want their spouse to be with them. Well, there's different times. She said, don't, don't you need to go to the church today? You know, it be a Friday or a Saturday or something. Don't you need to go to the church? I know what she was saying. I can tell you hadn't been. You know, people can tell that you haven't been and you haven't been in his presence. Amen? No, I don't, I don't have the issues much anymore because I've learned that, that we don't worship God on Sunday, <coughs> on, on Monday morning or Monday evening, it's, it's, it's a life. Yeah. Amen. That's what it becomes. It's, it's not a, you start where you start, understand that, but it becomes a life. Amen. Yeah. So they forsook all it means to leave and to abandon. It's time for you to move forward. Do not wait on things to fall in place. Submit to him today and all will be well. Amen. Last scripture, Matthew 16. I got plenty more, but this is a good stopping place. I say, what are you doing next week? Well, I got them prepared for, for uh, communion, Matthew 16, 24. We want to take communion for sure. But one of the things the Lord has told me, even concerning the church, He said, you're going to find out that I'm not a seasonal preacher. So what does that mean? Well, you know, you go by, you see a lot of churches got, you know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Grandparents' Day. You know, I think some of the churches ain't picking on nobody. But some of them's got to where they pray for the dogs up there and stuff. I don't remember which denomination that is. I don't, I, I don't know and don't want to know because I'm not going <clears throat> to get my dog prayed for or blessed or drop water or whatever they do. I say, Pastor, you're just ignorant about those things and I thank God every day. I'm not looking for foolishness. I'm looking for God. Amen. You say, well, you love your dog. Yeah, i got a dog. I won't say that. Some of y'all some of y'all say if my animal's not in heaven, I don't want to go. <clears throat> you just haven't been to hell yet if you believe that. <laughs> <laughs> if, you to, if you just read a little bit in the Bible, you wouldn't say that no more. <coughs> Hell hath enlarged itself, but it ain't for me. <laughs> what about you? We're going to close with this this morning. But many people, they hold home for security reasons. But our security is in Him. We must <coughs> let go and trust Him because as we know the Word says, He'll never leave us, never forsake us. Amen? 